December 30th, 2169. Kira unsheathed her Doktar, and Chancellor Doros grabbed his Batleth. The battle was grueling, and both Kitra and Doros were injured, but neither landed a fatal blow. Doros was able to land a pretty severe slash on Kidra, but she used this as an opportunity to stab Doros in the heart. Whether Doros was fit to be Chancellor or not, at least he died on his feet like a true Klingon warrior. Since Kidra won the challenge, she has become the new Chancellor of the Klingon Empire. April 22nd, 2170. The Great House of Tia was invited by the Great House of Antak to a feast, which they accepted. But things quickly deteriorated when one of Epitai Tia's children allegedly insulted the honor of Epitai Antak. Antak was furious and demanded a fight, but the challenged party was a child, too young to be a fair opponent, and to fight him would bring great dishonor. So he challenged Epitai Tia instead, as she is responsible for her house. The Chancellor stepped in and declared that this dispute should instead be solved by more blood wine. July 27, 2170. Finally, a real fight. We destroyed the remainder of the Sulaban fleet and captured their main starbase. But more fun is yet to come. We must now attack their capital, which is in orbit of the gas giant. October 3rd, 2170. Fleet Admiral Ratbeard has put General Phobos in charge of the KDF's ground forces. He is ordered to leave his nine honor guard divisions and assault the two Suliban helixes in the Jester and Kelsey systems. May 28th, 2171. The IKS Vahul has been constructed, and Zolaria has been made the captain of the vessel. The Vahul has been sent to investigate reports of a massive alien alliance in the Alpha Quadrant. November 9th, 2171. The Honor Guard, led personally by General Phobos, has captured the Suliban Helix in the Jester system. The Honor Guard is now proceeding to the Helix in the Kelsey system. November 21st, 2171. The Chancellor has decided to continue in the search for the Sword of Kalis. The IKS Vivak is en route to the planet in Suliban space, but they have been ordered to wait until the war has concluded or the system has been completely secured by the Grand Honor Vanguard. December 29th, 2171. The Honor Guard has boarded and captured the Suliban Helix, and the Suliban Primarch has announced their surrender of the Nomat, Jester, and Kelsey systems to the Empire. February 26th, 2172. Fleet Admiral Ratbeard has promoted Captain Philip Hall to the rank of Admiral because of his command ability and brilliant tactical mind. Admiral Philip Hall is given the right to name his new fleet, currently comprised of nine Borel-class birds of prey. He has chosen to name the fleet the Domino Battalion. July 18th, 2172. The IKS Vivak has entered the Highland system to investigate the Herc medical facility that is supposedly on Highland 2A. The Suliban have been forced to allow the Vibak into the system and survey the planet due to the peace treaty that was signed. March 5th, 2173. Continued work on photonic torpedoes has led to the internal components being half the size that they were previously. This has allowed us to fit a much larger warhead and a higher capacity energy reserve, giving the torpedo much more maneuverability and tracking capabilities. July 7th, 2173. The IKS Vivak found the medical facility on Highland 2A, but the Suldaban have refused to allow us to investigate further by using a loophole in the peace treaty. Breaking the peace treaty would be a very dishonorable act, so for now, 
we must comply. But when the treaty expires in 2182, the Suliban will discover our fleets bombarding their helixes and devastating their starbases. September 23rd, 2173 The Tiburon Alliance has once again started taking star systems on our border, and our peace treaty with them has already expired. So the Grand Honor Vanguard will finish its repairs and refits. It has been ordered to proceed to the border once they have finished. January 4th, 2174 the Great House of Antak has lost some of their warships due to what appears to be sabotage, and they have accused the Great House of Tia of perpetrating this dishonorable act. The House of Tia has completely denied these claims, and the two houses were on the brink of war, but the Chancellor convinced them to let the KDI investigate and discover who was actually responsible. June 2nd, 2174 the Bureau of Science has developed what they are calling the Invisibility Barrier. Apparently, they have discovered a way to redirect light, radar, and other forms of sensors as we please. The Invisibility Barrier has two major drawbacks. One, it requires an immense amount of power to operate even for short periods of time. Two, we can't fire weapons while it is activated, relegating it to a first strike weapon only. Fleet Admiral Ratbeard is currently attempting to acquire the Invisibility Barrier for the vessels in the Grand Honor Vanguard and the Domino Battalion. January 1st, 2175 The KDI has finished its investigation into the suspected sabotage. The only conclusion was that the House of Tia didn't perpetrate the attack. No alternative suspect was found, so the Great House of Antak said the report was a fake. This has evolved into a full-scale house war between the two Great Houses. The Chancellor has decided that the Empire will stay out of this matter. January 26, 2175. We found a derelict ship in orbit of Hengel 4. The team I sent to have reports finds the ship crew dead, mostly from the life support system failing, but some appear to have acted suicidally in their final moments. We took scans of the ship and its crew. Now it's time to continue investigating the system. Some of my crew has started acting strangely, almost like they drank all entire kegs of blood wine. My science officer was going over the scans of the alien crew and found some form of brain parasites that eludes our initial scans. Scans taken from the crew that went to the ship also show this brain parasite. I have ordered all crew that has been infected by the parasite to be transported to the derelict ship to be fully quarantined. The science officer will attempt to find a cure. She says it's unlikely. Unfortunately, that means these Klingon warriors will die without honor. As the science officer predicted, all crew members that we quarantined on the derelict ship died when they all went insane and overloaded the ship's engines, causing the entire ship to explode. One thing is clear, if they were ever allowed to stay on the Nekvar, it would have been our ship that exploded. We have set a course for Kronos to pick up replacements for our lost crew. May 1st, 2176 We have received a distress call from the IKS Nupult. The crew has apparently gone mad and started killing each other. The captain completely lost control of the situation, and the ship's warp drive was overloaded, destroying the vessel. Sending help now would be a futile endeavor. May 14th, 2176 the Great House of Tach has once again performed a very honorable act. A transport belonging to the Great House of Moog was attacked by pirates. The crew fought like true Klingons, but they would have surely been defeated if it were not for a raptor from the House of Tach coming to their aid. March 1st, 2177 We have declared war on the Tiburon Alliance. 
This war will be a great test of our new invisibility barriers. Fleet Admiral Ratbeard is in charge of conducting our invasion. The Grand Honor Vanguard will destroy the Tide Buterin star bases in the Zeta, Leporis, and Ardana systems, then move on to the Tide Buterin homeworld. Admiral Hall will lead his Domino Battalion to destroy the remainder of their star bases, then assist General Phobos and his Honor Guard to land and occupy their colonies. We will make them regret the day they chose to antagonize the Klingon Empire. December 5th, 2177. We have captured all four of the Tiberian star bases. Now we are engaging the star base that is protecting their homeworld, which shall be an easy task. April 13th, 2176. The Bureau of Science has developed a new, more powerful and flexible raptor. This D5 raptor is based on the old D4 model. The D5 is set to replace the Samra-class raptor as the powerhouse of the fleet. The D5-class was designed in the late 2170s as a replacement for the Samra-class raptor, at a length of 210 meters and a width of 160 meters, and has a crew complement of 40 spread across 6 decks. The class has a titanium magnesite hull and Type 6 deflector shields. It's armed with three medium forward-facing tetranic disruptors, two tetranic disruptor turrets, and two photon torpedo launchers. The class is also equipped with a tractor beam emitter, matter transporter, and the new experimental invisibility barrier. August 25th, 2178. General Phobos and the Honor Guard have landed and captured the Tiburon colony of Orana. Their next target is the colony in the Sherman system. Then onto the greatest prize of all, their home world. November 5th, 2178. The Tiburon Alliance has ceded ownership of the Zeta Leporis, Ardana, Barbie, and Haskin systems to the Empire. The High Council has suggested the idea that the Tiburon Alliance become a protectorate of the Empire, and after much deliberation, they smartly agreed. February 1st, 2179. Captain Zolaria on board the IKS Vahul reports making contact with this unknown alliance that we have heard about in the Alpha Quadrant. They call themselves the United Federation of Planets, which is an alliance made up of multiple species. We believe their defensive capabilities are quite formidable in comparison to our own, but their Starfleet appears to be nothing but puppets of the so-called humans. January 9th, 2180. The war between the Great Houses of Tia and Antak has finally come to an end, with the House of Antak coming out on top. Unfortunately, many ships on both sides were lost. It will take time for both houses to rebuild their fleets. January 12th, 2181. The Chancellor has received reports that the Fleet Admiral has been acquiring very large amounts of blood wine. It was assumed that the blood wine was for his crew, but it appears to only be for the Fleet Admiral himself. Some have questioned if he should remain in his position. One of the generals serving under his command challenged him, calling him a drunkard unfit for command. The fight barely lasted a minute, and the Fleet Admiral slayed the general. The Chancellor hears the story and is told that the Fleet Admiral should be removed from the command. Her order was to send him more blood wine. March 14th, 2182. The peace treaty between us and the Suleban Cabal has expired. The Fleet Admiral is already prepared to start engaging their starbases. The main goal for this war is fully securing the Highland system, so we can continue our search for the Sword of Kalis. October, uh, Ensign, what's the date? The date! Ah, yes. October 20th, 2182. 
The Grand Honor Vanguard, along with Admiral Hall's Domino Battalion, have just engaged and captured the first two Sulaban star bases. Just three more to go before we reach the Highland system. General Phobos is following close behind with the Honor Guard to capture the Sulaban Helixes. Then we will celebrate with kegs of blood wine and fresh gawk. Kapla! April 23rd, 2183. I am once again fighting the Sulaban's main star bases in Exile System, and it's just as easy as the first time. These Sulaban pigs are just not capable of having a good, honorable fight. What a waste of my time. There's more honor in a bottle of blood wine. Mmm, blood wine. Yes, Ensign, bring me more blood wine. Ha ha ha. December 18th, 2183. Admiral Philip Hall, after his recent victory in the Myram system, has started emphasizing the importance of rapid coordinated maneuvers in his fleet. He has been experimenting with new formations and patterns to get the most agility and speed out of the starships under his command. And they call me a drunk. A drunk? The Grand Honor Vanguard has secured the Highland system. General Phobos and his Honor Guard are en route to board and capture the Sulaban Helix. It seems my job here is done. For the Empire! Hmm. It seems that the Sulaban fleet has snuck in behind Admiral Hall. I have ordered him to track the fleet down and destroy them. The Admiral better make short work of these pests. My patience wears thin, and I'm getting low on blood wine. April 29th, 2184. The Great House of Tach has accused the Great House of Antak of harboring a murderer. A member of the House of Antak apparently killed the son of Epitai Tach while he had his back turned, which is extremely dishonorable. Epitai Tach has demanded a fight against his son's murderer, but they have refused. This matter has risen to the Chancellor herself, and she decided to force the murderer to fight Epitai Tach, so he can act as a champion for his son, so he will be accepted into Stobokor. The fight lasted only a few seconds. Epitai Tach's experience dwarfed that of the murderer, and with the death of his son's killer, Epitai Tach secured his son's entry into Stovokor. May 4th, 2184. Admiral Hall has just redeemed himself by cornering the Sulaban fleet in the hammock system and wiping out most of their fleet. Some of the vessels, though, did escape. June 28th, 2184. The Sulaban Cabal surrendered the Highland system after the Honor Guard boarded and captured the Helix in the system. The IKS Vivac has been diverted to Kronos to pick up Litor, then proceed to Highland 2A to hopefully find the sword of Kalis. February 6th, 2185. Captain Zolaria has made contact with the Romulan Star Empire. From what we have seen, everything that the Romulans stand for is completely opposite from what we stand for. The worst part is they appear to be extremely dishonorable. They would rather stab someone in the back instead of fighting with honor. December 6th, 2185. Captain Valkris and Lee Tor arrived on Highland 2A. They used their batliths to cut a path through the dense jungle. They eventually found the remains of a hospital facility and medical research facility, but it appears to have been gutted of any equipment, most likely by the Sulaban. The team comes across a group of aliens with bald heads and light orange skin, hiding in a cellar. They were forced out and interrogated by the team. The aliens are apparently survivors of a starship that crashed on this world a few months ago. They say they found this facility just as empty as we did, with the exception of a single medical journal. Litor and Valkyris have decided to continue searching the planet for any further leads.
December 5th, 2186. The tour has found nothing else of interest on the planet of Highland 2A. While at first the medical journal they found seemed useless, upon further inspection they discovered that deep within the pages of the journal, the Herc author makes a small reference to the location of some Herc bases in this part of the galaxy. We already knew about all these bases except one, which is on the planet Mo Rihan in the Due system, which is also controlled by the Suliban. So it seems once this new peace treaty expires, we will once again find ourselves in Suliban space. July 19th, 2187. The plasma arrays on board our vessels have been improved drastically over the years, allowing for larger amounts of power to be run through them. This has led to the development of a new weapon, similar to our Bachek ground assault weapons. Whilst these new disruptors are extremely energy intensive, they can disintegrate targets quickly. Twenty nine. Uh, January 2188, uh, I think pesky pirates, they dare to attack our outpost in the Pratha system. Unfortunately for them, they will meet their doom as they are no match for our outpost. Ah! The pirate scum, they managed to make off with some of my own blood wine. My personal blood wine, which was in the outpost's cargo bay. Ensign, set a new intercept course now, and we shall show the galaxy what happens when you attack the Empire and steal from the Supreme Commander. Once my fleet has finished its refit, and I have finished my bottle, the large group of pirates hiding in the Halley system will feel the wrath of our updated fleet, and I shall have my wine back. <laughs> Supreme Commander Ratbeard, out. April 22nd, 2182. The Great House of Tach is demanding an apology or ritual combat against the Great House of Moog for insulting their honor at a High Council meeting. Epitai Mulg has accepted the challenge for ritual combat. After 15 minutes of fierce combat between Epitai Tach and Moog, there was no clear winner, even though both warriors gave it their all. The Chancellor ruled that neither house can claim victory, so the matter should be considered resolved. Victory can only go to a victor, after all. October 3rd, 2189. The KDI, which is also responsible for performing counterintelligence, has captured someone that they believe to be a spy. Unfortunately, we cannot tell what species they are since they have been altered to be Klingon. Even their bio sign shows Klingon. The only way to tell for sure would be a full autopsy. The KDI believes the spy is either human, Suliban, or Romulan. Other species are possible, but not as likely. The KDI does have a lead on another possible spy but they are still investigating and are not certain as of yet. Who do you think should be the next target of the Klingon Empire? Let's discuss it in the comments, or you could join our Discord and discuss it there. I also regularly ask members to vote on major events that happen in the series, so if you want to say in what happens next, join the collective Discord in the description below. If you want to see Star Trek New Horizons gameplay, I recommend Cornish Wetbeard and Jamie Plays. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. Live long and prosper. The mission is proceeding as planned. I see distrust is growing among the houses. I estimate they will... Stand by. Hey! Hey! Let go!